This is every vinyl record that I have brought in 2023 and we have quite a few to go through today and this is basically going to become my new like yearly tradition. Last year I did the videos showing you every vinyl record I brought in 2022 and that video has been the best performing video on my channel and I thought since it did so well you guys clearly are interested in seeing what records I brought over the year, why not do it for 2023? Unless I've miscounted there should be about 13 records here and weirdly enough quite a lot of them I haven't actually gotten around to opening so first one we have that I haven't opened is Nars with King's Disease 3. Now Nas is someone who I've gotten into a lot over the past two years. I think King's Disease 2 came out and ever since then I've just been addicted to his music and going into it to the point where I'm predicting he's going to be my number one most listened to artist on my Spotify rap this year. Maybe we should have a look at that. And I'll be honest King's Disease 3 I think was out of all the ones from King's Disease 1 all the way through Magic 3. I think this is the one that disconnected with me the most maybe. Now that's not to say it's bad I just think all the other ones might be better than this but I'd have to go back and re-listen to this one probably my favorite song on this was probably i want to say it was sort of the hit off this album is 30. it's the song i listen to the most on this album but in terms of the vinyl record itself this is a limited edition if it wants to focus right here a limited edition colored vinyl so how about we have a look at what this vinyl this and this is basically a bit of a blend of like black and red and i love how it goes it's kind of like that it's not really tie-dye, but it's just like how it blends all in together. So here's a little bit of a look. You can see the ring light within it, but there you can have a bit of a look at how this looks. I love the colours on vinyl pressings like this as well. So cool. And on screen, I'll show you exactly what's gone into it. You basically just have on the opening, on the inside of it, picture of Nas with a nice black and white colouring. You also have an insert that just gives you all the credits and whatnot. Really like the photography of this with Nas and Hitboy in it. So yeah, like this is a pretty much overall really nice album to add to the collection. And basically, no, I don't think it does yet. It, it definitely completes my Nas's King's Disease. Um, vinyl collection. Nas has been on an absolute solid run over the, well, past since 2020 essentially, so really happy to be able to add this. I'm not sure what he's going to be working on next, but whatever it is, I'm going to be happy to be listening to it. Now moving on to a record that I have actually opened this year, and this was one that I actually got for my birthday, and that is Drake with Take Care, which you can see right there. Now this is up there as one of my favourite Drake albums. I think probably um, if you're reading this too late, tops it, but I really like this. I think it's got a really good track list. I think probably my favourite songs on it are Crew Love and as well as Hell Yeah. Hell Yeah is like the song that I probably have listened to the most on this album as well. A real nice album that I just really wanted to add to my collection. I haven't got too many Drake albums. I want to say I've, I know I've definitely got if you're reading this, it's too late, but other than that, I don't believe I've got any others. So this might actually just be my second Drake vinyl record. Album cover is classic. Other than that, I think if you like the album, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Let's not spend too much time on this one. Now, whilst we're on the subject of Lil Wayne's protege, how about we talk about Lil Wayne the Carter 3? Because this is actually probably my most recent. I mean, technically it came with another one in the package. I'll get onto that one in a moment. But this is technically my most recent purchase of the vinyl record. I think the Carter is a series of albums that just like kind of, it's like a classic thing within hip hop. And people would debate over which one is their favorite one. Personally, for me, surprisingly, probably not the go-to one is the Carter 5, and I just really like it. I think, if anything, it's literally just because of the last song. I love that song, um, which is Let It All Work Out. I love it, but going on to this album, this is just a classic in terms of the songs that go on here. Mr. Carter is probably the favorite for me on this one, featuring Jay-Z. I absolutely love that song. And Millie, everyone's at least heard like the sound or bite of that song. Same again with Lollipop. This album has some classics on it, and probably one of the most recognizable like album covers as well so and it's kind of that thing of in rap where it's basically any album that's got a baby on it it fucking slaps and this one definitely fits that criteria in case you are interested that is the back of it Lil Wayne with the free bars making the cart free there um, with the track list and then on the inside we have Mr. Carter himself alongside what sides of the discs have what songs and this is interesting I've never really seen a print like this but clearly the sleeve that's holding it, if we can get to focus, has basically got the place that printed the vinyl, I believe it is, Urban Legends. So that's something I haven't seen before. And then it's just a bit of a regular record, this one. Oh, this was actually quite a nice smooth one to get the records back in with. I'm not going to take them out and show to you again because I don't want to go through another fight. And linking this album back to the one I talked about previously with Take Care by Drake, 
This album's also my second album for another artist, so I think this is my only other um, record I've got of Lil Wayne's, because the other one is, as I previously mentioned, The Carter Five, which is a nice little link for those two albums to have in my own little collection so far. Okay, now this one's a technicality, because this was actually one I got in 2022, but the way I kind of did that video last year is obviously, I can't just skip ahead of time and just tell you what I've got in at uh, Christmas. So this was one of the Christmas present vinyls I got last year. A bit of a Lupe fiasco with drill music and Xeon, and this was an album that I didn't really like get a chance to listen to and it was kind of like I was asked what do I want for Christmas and I was just like kind of going through albums that I should listen to and this one was one that I believe it came out last year and it was one I was kind of like hearing good things about and I was like you know what I'll give it a listen if I like it I'll ask for it for vinyl. If not for anything because of the artwork I absolutely love the artwork. Let's get this off first. But as I was saying if not for anything it's because it looks like a piece of art because it is a piece of art. I believe Lupe Fiasco like actually paints and this was like one of his paints he did for this and I absolutely really love how it is and it was truly something that really like drew me to check out the album more than anything like you, people underestimate how much an album cover can really draw people in and i really like the simplicity with this album it's kind of speaking to that whole art kind of thing and then oh we've got like kind of a picture record sleeve at least different you've got lupe there as well with a bit of photo and then yeah this is just like a regular record but again another one i'm really happy to have to look Add to collection because I've really enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie, I can't remember. I, it's been a while since I've listened to this album. And I can't remember how it sounds, but I remember I liked it. Might be an excuse for me to go and put on the old rough vinyl record player and actually give this one another listen, just so then I can remind myself why it's actually so good and why I wanted to add it to my collection. Now I'm gonna quickly run through these next three, almost next two. Definitely, I'm just gonna sort of show on screen to show that I brought them. So we have Nas again with Magic One. Nope, yes, yes. Magic One, so we got that and that's like a limited edition record as well, green and black. And we also have Freddie Gibbs with his album Soul Sold separately, and try saying that fast over and over again. And that is also a limited edition vinyl, which is like a blue one. And the reason I'm just going through these ones very quickly is because if you want to go and find yourself to my last video, which I believe should appear here, you'll be able to find my latest video where I basically did a little bit of an unboxing of free limited edition vinyl. So that's why I'm going quickly through them here because that, that video you can go and see what they fully are and there were three of them and the third one in it was this one by Logic. Now there's not just a reason I haven't included it in just being like here's College Park, get it out the window, but there was something I really forgot to mention in that last video about this album. If I pull it out, you don't really see anything too special, it's just sort of the album cover itself, You've got the inside of it and then you have got the uh, I'm not I don't want to fight this, I'm, I hate taking records in and out of the boxes whatever but tell me if you spot anything very special on the back of this if it stops focusing on my bloody face have you spotted it yet comment down below what you think it is or what you thought it was before i unveil it all right you had enough time see this here that's logic signature if you go and watch my last video i didn't even mention that this was a signed vinyl record by logic i just completely didn't realize and just forgot when i ordered it, it was a, it was supposed to be a signed one until i basically believe if i looked at the sticker i was basically just like putting it back in after that video and then i sort of looked at this and i was like actually did i okay i was about to go through a whole story that i just made up in my head clear clearly about how i discovered how this was signed i basically thought it was on the sticker that i add to these and whatnot it doesn't mention anything about being a signed record there which makes sense because you can't just print that over and over because there'll be some limited edition ones that don't get signed but i think for this video i was actually looking through my previous orders to make sure i hadn't missed any out and i came across this order again where this one was ordered and i was like Hang on, that says signed. Went and had a look and I was like, where does it say signed? And obviously it's right there. So as you can tell, I'm someone who doesn't really pay attention, which makes sense considering I'm someone who works in social media rather than an actual productive job. So yeah, that was a little cool thing to sort of show for you there. Got a nice little signature from Logic. They probably just was like annoyed because it's hand after doing so many. All right, what do we want to do next? Let's do a bit of the superhero. Spider-Man. Bit of a fun story about this one. So I'm actually really happy with this product that I've got. Um, it's basically, in case you don't know already, this is Metro Booming's in, no, Across the Spider-Verse. Um, basically the soundtrack for the music he did for that film. But this vinyl that I've got, I'm really happy with because I actually did order both of them at the same time and I'm happy to have this one. I know with Gravity, I've one got cancelled and this, now I have this in my hand. I'll show on screen what it actually looks like up close, but 
I really love the artwork on this. I think this is one that I'm just never going to touch in terms of playing on a record. I just want to keep it within the collection, keep it nice and safe because the artwork on this is so cool. I love the Spider-Man, the animated Spider-Man Miles Morales films because the artwork on it is insane. And to top it all off, the films themselves are fantastic. I cannot wait for part two of Across the Spider-Verse. And the music, I absolutely love this beautiful album and I genuinely would like to see it win like some form of Grammy or something for like best soundtrack. Like I've always heard of Metro Viewing, I'm sure I've like listened to stuff of his, like I'm not really into producers as much. But I, of course obviously I've heard Metro Viewing before, I'm sure I've heard plenty of his songs that I just didn't realise were produced by him. But this album and like everything he's done to work with this film is enough to make me a fan of his and I absolutely love. And the extra cherry on top of this album is the fact that Nas is on it as well with his Nas Morales. I absolutely love it. Been a minute since I've listened to the album but I love it and I'm probably going to start listening to it all over again and I hope to see it pop up again on my Spotify wrapped. I think what I really appreciate with the music on this is it just perfectly complements exactly the same feel and energy from the film. I'm super happy to have this in the collection as you can probably tell by how I'm talking about it. This might be my favourite pickup of the year. I actually, I, I'm looking at what I've got and I think it might be. Now I've got two more here that I'm just going to quickly show you the covers of and not go into too much detail but First one we have is the Eminem Show limited edition version, as well as the 8 Mile limited edition version. I think they're both celebrating the 20th anniversaries of both albums, maybe. But again, press this magic button and then you'll be able to see what they exactly look like in those videos themselves. So this next album is a bit of Outkast. I love Outkast and I believe these are kind of like... Outkast is basically in my collection when I'm starting to grow a bit more. And I'm not going to lie, I don't know how to say this album's name correctly, so... I tried just looking it up on Google and it, she basically said Equimini, so I'm going to say aqua Aquarium, that's what I'm calling this now. People will hate on me for not knowing my basic hip hop facts and the fact that this is a limited edition one, I probably don't have the right to own since I don't know how to actually say the name. And sometimes I get albums that I've never listened to before and this is one of them. Um, it's essentially a fact that it's Outkast, I like Outkast and I want to get into more of their music. I have considered getting... Um, Andre 3000's the latest album on vinyl because I saw it and I was like hmm, maybe I should just get it for the sake of it because it's basically, in case you don't know, he's released an album basically just playing the flute and I've listened to it and it's not bad, it's like genuinely I kind of wish there was some rapping or just some like songs in general on it properly like people singing over it or whatever because I think it would make a really good album but it's what he wanted to do and it's actually not that bad, it's, a, it's very time consuming but if you, if you want to have a look, have a look. So basically, I think the deal with this limited edition album or vinyls is basically different colours. So you have a green transparent one. We also have a pink transparent one. And I'm going to predict that the last one is a yellow. It's a yellowy, yeah, it's yellow. Nice yellow transparent vinyl. With a little bit of an insert, the actual box itself doesn't open it's literally just a box to hold it all in which to be honest it's nice and thick enough just to be able to slide this in and out so it makes it nice and easy for me to put everything in even though i'm not showing the best examples of that so the next one is the weekend with highlights so again this is sort of another artist i've kind of decided i'm gonna pick up on and just kind of like make a bit of collection out of their music so currently in my collection i've definitely got an eminem collection going on logic collection going on kendrick collection going on and i'd say those are my big three the weekend's getting in there, um, as well as obviously Outcast and J. Cole's probably the other one that kind of makes up my top five to six. Originally, I did see this like when it first released, and I was like, oh, maybe I should get it. I think it had like a limited edition, like red glittery um, vinyl press. But at the end of the day, I was like, it's just a bit of a like compilation album of like the hits and whatnot. And when it comes to these albums, I'm not that bothered by them. Like again, like Eminem brought out um, Kurt Cool 2. Even though I did get that, but that's kind of like my addiction. You slap an Eminem on it on a record and I'm going to buy it. But with The weekend, I kind of was going to give it a miss until basically I just went out shopping one day with my girlfriend and went in a record store, saw it, and it was the one that sort of took my eyes. And I was like, you know what? Got the spare cash for it today. I'll just buy it because why not? In case you would like to see, there's the inside of it. I love the photography of it. I think it's basically what you get on the back there. And there's the front. Didn't realise he did a song for the Fifty Shades of Grey, but it's the weekend, so it kind of makes sense. Because basically this takes all the hits between 2011 to 2021. As you can see by the compilation little trademark thing there. Uh, 
I mean this in the with no disrespect that this is probably going to be a really weak way to end this um this basically video showing every record I've got but it is Imagine Dragons with Smoke and Mirrors. Now this album itself I actually do have fond memories of. I think it's a good album otherwise I wouldn't have got it for vinyl nor would I add it to my collection. It's obviously completely different from hip hop and rap and it's a bit more I guess pop indie is probably the way to put it but as I tend to do with a lot of things in my life I like to link it to wrestling. Now whilst you have great songs on here like Gold or Polaroid the song on here that really made me love it and kind of actually had a little bit of a phase when I was much younger into Imagine Dragons was the song Monster. Now I'm going to try and put a little clip on here, I might have to remove it, but basically back in the day in 2014 for Wrestlemania you had Daniel Bryan going after the WWE and the World Heavyweight Championship and there was this amazing, it's probably the best video package I've ever seen in wrestling. And in case you're not familiar with what that really means, essentially it's like before there's a match you get a little bit of a trailer sort of being like this is why these two are upset with each other, this is why this person's fighting for this belt, stuff like that giving you a summary as a new viewer or just someone who's not been following the main story, just kind of like have a roundup and summary of why these people are fighting. Why did I go really Bristolian then? And this video package for Daniel Bryan, because of all the momentum he had going in and basically the story they had been telling with him, they found a perfect song on this album to go with it and that is Monster. And that would be forever why I picked out this album to have in my collection for that one song. Honestly, I highly recommend going out of your way to find this video package because you'll get an understanding of what I'm on about, especially if you're interesting and maybe you weren't watching around that time because you'll just be able to understand the story clearly through there and it feel the emotion because of the song. Otherwise, you might just be watching this being like, you're telling me this guy likes wrestling. Is he a grown child? Yes, there's a wrestling poster there and you can already see my Lego either side of me and a Spider-Man thing there. So yes, I'm a giant man-child. <laughs> and bringing it back to the subject of vinyl records, um, I've bent this already, I've bent the corner accidentally. Uh, but in terms of the record themselves, they do have a bit of an image on them. So you've got the face there, yeah, and then on the other side, you have another face because obviously the story of gold is the... I know what the story of it is, but I can't remember what it's, the actual title of the story is that it's based off. Basically the guy who just touches anything turns to gold. That's basically what one of those images are linked to. So that right there was every vinyl record that I have brought in 2023. I don't actually think I got as many as last year. I think last year I had a about 16 this year we got 13 so my next video after this if it's not the video i'm supposed to have gotten round two will probably be my black friday like pickups that i've got and those will most likely be brought up in next year's video showing you everything i got in 2024 and i cannot believe i'm already in basically near the year of 2024 it feels it feels bizarre to me as i'm sure it does for a lot of you guys as well but i didn't do this for last year's one I'm going to pick a favourite of what I brought, I've already said it, and that is this one. This is both in terms of the look and design of the vinyls, as well as the actual soundtrack and music that is actually on it. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Metro Booming soundtrack is my favourite album of this year most likely, and is also my favourite vinyl record that I've got in terms of picture discs. Obviously it's not got the box or anything, but I don't care, the discs more to make up for that. And how why don't we throw this in there as well what's my least favorite it's going to be imagine dragons only because it feels like a very random one for me to pick up please do go out your way to watch the m m records i got or go and watch the free limited edition ones i brought there's in the most recent video or hell go back to last year and see what vinyl records i picked up then if you want to leave the video now feel free to go for it i'm just going to do a little bit of admin basically i am looking to keep on top of the youtube channel so over the next basically month for christmas you should get the black friday video I would like to try and get my um, I made a rap album video out but that's going really slowly in terms of me getting around to it um, and also the Christmas Day video that's something that I have as a yearly tradition it won't really be vinyl related I'll probably mention it in this in that video but it's kind of more of a video to look over more real life stuff that have happened over the year as well as the channel and everything everything that's happened in the year essentially and then when it comes to the new year I'm gonna try looking into ways to expand the content in terms of what I do and what I create because I'm really enjoying the YouTube channel so far as to sort of change on me to it to just focus on vinyl records and music and it's clearly shown in terms of how the channel has grown over this past year so I want to take a second to say thank you all very much for tuning into the channel welcome if you are new and I hope to catch you in the next video that I put out other than that I have been Ollie Rodriguez Dorman and I shall see you in the next video have a very good day a later